Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome, dear viewers, to our live program, Gems of the Heart. And I'm your host for the program, Junaid Da. Dear brothers and sisters, viewers from around the world, I'd like to begin by thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for bringing us all together, uniting our hearts and giving us the opportunity to talk about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to talk about the authentic teachings of the Qur'an and the Sunnah. I'd also like to make mention of the blessed Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now dear viewers, as the name suggests, gems of the heart, we are looking at matters that are relating to our hearts, so matters of belief. But as we made mention that these matters are not just philosophical or theological, but, but we are really focusing on actions that will improve the conditions of our heart, to purify our heart with the goal that will strengthen our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we've had a long journey. Now we are into the topic of the names and attributes of Allah. We started by looking at the name Allah, and we had a whole program on that. Then we moved forward and we looked at the names of Ar-Rahman and Ar-Rahim, and that was a beautiful segment, looking at the mercy of Allah subhanahu and today we're going to be looking at another name. Well, there are three names under this category, and they are Al Ghafur, Al Ghafir, and Al Ghaffar. So they all sound very similar. So you're probably thinking, what are the differences between each of these names? But there is a common denominator uh, amongst these names, and inshallah, that's what we're going to be talking about today. So, dear brothers and sisters, the only way that we can truly appreciate and understand Allah is by knowing Him through His names and His attributes which we extract from the Qur'an and from the Sunnah. Let us begin by introducing our Shaykh and then we can go straight into our program and also open up the phone lines for you guys to join us from around the world. If I can begin by introducing Shaykh Ibrahim Zidane who, mashallah, mm -hmm. has been working very hard with us on this program, Gems of the Heart, and explaining these detailed uh, matters on, on Aqidah. Shaykh, I'd like to begin by saying assalamu alaikum. Uh, dear brothers and sisters, as we made mention that the phone lines are going to be open very soon and the question from last week is still running. We would like for all of you to participate. The question was, what is the difference between Ar-Rahman and Ar-Rahim? And we said it very clearly at the beginning of our program. So those of you who want to join us, pick up your phones. Call us, inshallah ta'ala, we will uh, love to hear your responses. We'll also read out the responses you gave us on Facebook towards the end of the program, and we'll give you the question for this program as well. Uh, Sheikh, we're moving, mashallah, very swiftly with these <coughs> names and attributes. And last time we spoke about Rahman Rahim, and today we're looking at the name Al Ghafur, Al Ghafir, and Al Ghaffar. So if I can start off by asking you to tell me what's the relationship between these three names? Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam wa rasulullah wa ba'd. Uh, these beautiful names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refers to one meaning which is al-maghfira or forgiveness. And it comes from the root of ghafara which means covering something. Okay. Uh, and the Arab used the word to cover. Cover with power to have the ability to do so. So al-maghfira is basically forgiveness that covering the sin. That the person would not be punished as a result of the sin, which is different than Tawbah. We'll talk about that later, inshallah ta'ala. But these three names, but mainly Al Ghaffar and Al Ghafur, which are the two names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's in Arabic, Sirat Mubalagha, which means uh, too much. That means it's always there, it's always happening. Not once in a while, not in a certain situation that it would happen. No, at all times, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives the sins. Okay. Whether it's big sins, and that's where usually the word uh, al ghaffar comes in place if it's a big, huge sin. Or al ghafur continuously forgiving the sins. Okay. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one that forgives the big, big, major sins. And He subhanahu wa ta'ala the one that constantly forgives His slaves from the time of Adam alayhi salam till the Day of Judgment. And ghafir is basically, as you know in Arabic, is fa'al, that means it's related to uh, al hadith or relates to the action or something that happened. And that's why it's mentioned in the Quran not alone, but uh, attached to something. Ghafir al dhamb. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive the sin. So when the sin is committed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive uh, the sin of his slaves. Okay. So uh, this is basically, you know, in general, the meaning of uh, maghfira or forgiveness, which is uh, one of the very important things that we need to, to really know. Okay, so we're looking at the topic of <coughs> forgiveness. And as you may mention that the three names are on different levels in terms of the strength or even, uh, I don't know if the right word is exaggerating or showing the strength of Allah's forgiveness. Right, and if you can imagine the sins, how many sins are being committed on the face of earth now? And yesterday, tomorrow, and from the time of Adam alayhi salam, 
sins are being committed constantly on the face of earth. And the worst sin is the sin of disbelief. Okay. And the things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most high, forbade human beings from doing, and they continue to do it. And he is the most forbearing, subhanahu wa ta'ala. He gives them time. And no matter what they do, if they turn to him sincerely, and they ask for forgiveness, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives because he promised that he would forgive. So this by itself is an amazing uh, name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, amazing attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that he is a loser, that his sins are not forgiven if he has these chances, and he doesn't return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with seeking forgiveness from Allah. Okay, and uh, Shaykh, as we are talking about Tawheed, the aspect of forgiveness, um, is it exclusive to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And at the same time, there's a beautiful verse which talks about وَمَنْ يَغْفِرَ الظُّنُوبَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ so how do we tie these two things together? Right. Uh, this is something that is in the essence of the Tawheed because uh, for a person to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone, we know that human beings are bound to make mistakes and sins. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created them this way. And he warned them if they commit sins that they deserve to be punished in the hellfire. Uh, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, one of his names is Al-Ghafur or Al-Ghaffar, that he forgive the sins. So for the forgiveness of the sins, that means a person is saved from the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For matters of Tawheed, for the believers to understand and to realize that whenever they commit a sin, no one will forgive them except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's the essence of the Tawheed. So they would turn not to idols, not to messengers, not to righteous people to forgive their sins, they would turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone because he is the owner of this. Okay. Other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they don't own anything. They cannot punish. They cannot give uh, mercy. They cannot do anything. It's all from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only one that forgives. And since that, he is the only one to be asked and for people to seek forgiveness from him. If it's a sin to do with other human beings, of course we know that we have to seek forgiveness from the human being. Because then the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is one thing and also the rights of the human beings. Okay. But the forgiveness in its essence that would save, if a human being can forgive. But if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not forgive, that sin is not forgiven. Okay. So he's the most forgiver subhanahu wa ta'ala and he's the only one for people to seek forgiveness as ibadah, as an act of worship, uh, because it's not accepted from any other but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, dear viewers, our phone lines are open now. You can see our numbers there across your screen. So do pick up your phones and do call us. You can answer the question of the fact that what is the difference between Ar-Rahman and Ar-Rahim? Or if you have any other uh, question or comment that you'd like to add, peel, please feel free to do that as well. Uh, Sheikh, we mentioned that uh, humans have the ability to forgive as well. Uh, but uh, what is the difference when we, when we say the word forgive and forget? And a person can forgive and for, can he forget? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what's the relationship there? Now, uh, for human beings, human beings are deficient. And we are ordered by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive and to forget the, the, the wrongdoing that people did to us if we forgive. And that's uh, basically is the good forgiveness. And uh, the forgiveness that has goodness in it that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Quran as a safh al jamil to pardon someone in a beautiful way. And they said the meaning of it is that you don't remind the person of his faults every time. If you forgive someone, then be steadfast in that forgiveness. Do not remind the person over and over again after you forgave him. Okay. Uh, but human beings, again, they have these weaknesses and they forgive for many reasons. And the believers that are in the highest of all of them because when they forgive, they forgive for the sake of Allah. Because they seek rewards from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. Not they seek also the other side to forgive them or so on, or they seek only the pleasure of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He's the owner of all things, and when He forgives subhanahu wa ta'ala, He forgives. Not just that He would uh, protect the person or cover the sin of the person, but it, the, the extreme forgiveness and that comes with covering the faults of the person in this life and in the hereafter, replacing the bad deeds and the sins with good deeds. You know, this is by the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay. And that's why always the forgiveness is associated with the mercy of Allah. Okay. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al ghafur al rahim Sure. He hides the sins, forgives the sins, and then you add to it the mercy of Allah. That the person, he comes as a sinner, he ends up gaining so much of the mercy of Allah. And at the opposite side, so too, because we have to be warned, a person might come to the day of judgment with mountains of good deeds.
Sure. And he ended up being thrown into the hellfire because he was not aware of his own sins that he would do when he was alone and not seeking forgiveness from Allah and so on. So the balance has to be there. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forgiveness. Nothing is the like of it. Okay. That if he forgives, that means that person is in, in the jannah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's in, in delight. No worries about that person whatsoever. And that's why one of the most important needs in our life is to be forgiven. And when if you want to make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for someone that passed away, you won't make dua for anything of this dunya, of course, because they departed from this life. Sure. The most important thing that a person needs after he departs from his life is to be forgiven. Sure. If he's forgiven, that means he's among those, uh, the people of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the close people of Allah. So if, if a person has attained Allah's maghfirah, then that implies that he's also attained Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's jannah. Definitely. Okay. Nah, because that's what it means. And that's the most important need then. Okay. To be guided in this life And once a person is guided To complete the iman He has to be always in a state of repentance to Allah So that when the moment of death comes He, he receives the good news that he has been forgiven And you would see many verses in the Quran That talks about forgiveness When it comes to uh, the, 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 the completion of one's iman And the goodness Not that their deeds and so on as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the end of Surah Al-Ahzab, إِنَّ عَرَضْنَا الْأَمَانَةَ عَلَى السَّمَوَاتِ وَأَرْضِ وَالْجِبَالِ فَأَبَيْنَا أَيَّ حَمِلْنَا وَأَشْفَقْنَا مِنْهَا وَحَمَلَهَا الْإِنسَانُ إِنَّهُ كَانَ ظَلُومًا جَهُولًا That the human beings, they bore this amana, and the human beings are too much of zulm, wrongdoing, and he is ignorant and so on. But then after that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, why this amana, this trust has been entrusted to the human being? لِيُعَذِّبَ اللَّهُ الْمُنَافِقِينَ وَالْمُنَافِقَاتِ وَالْمُشْرِكِينَ وَالْمُشْرِكَاتِ وَيَتُوبَ اللَّهُ عَلَى الْمُؤْمِنَ وَالْمُؤْمِنَاتِ وَكَانَ اللَّهُ عَفُونَ رَحِيمٌ okay. And that is to punish the disbelieving men and women and the hypocrites men and women and did not say to reward the believers, right? That people would expect to be... Sure. This is what, no, to repent and to accept the repentance of the believers and indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most forgiver, the most merciful. So the thing that made the believers elevated and to be away from the disbelievers and the hypocrites in the day of judgment and so on and to enter Jannah is that they repented to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah forgave their sins and bestowed his mercy on them as so, a result. So Shaykh, is it fair then to say like you said that one of the reasons of creation is the fact that we as humans and jinn we are obliged to seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's forgiveness that's a goal in our creation. Definitely, otherwise if no forgiveness that means it's the hellfire. Okay. And that's the purpose of life. And the purpose of life to establish the ubudiyah, the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it can never be attained unless there is seeking forgiveness with it. Okay. And that's why even after the ibadah is done, the Prophet sallam, the first thing that he would say after finishing the salah is astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah. Asking Allah for forgiveness. Even after the ibadah, which is supposed to be gaining so much rewards and so on, and the closest position that a person is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, immediately after that seeking forgiveness. Why? Because the ibadah can never be completed, can never be perfected, right. unless a person would see forgiveness because it's done in a deficient way, because we are humans. So uh, just, that's a very interesting point that Sheikh you raised that whenever we do something good and not in prayer but even in other aspects of worship we finish them with, saying, uh, uh, with istighfar. So is it like the istighfar is a substitution for our mistakes during the ibadah? It's as well as they say substitution to the sins or to the wrongdoing or the deficiency, deficiency. the weakness in our ibadah that's one thing but also that no matter how focused and how good we are in our ibadah, we cannot really fulfill the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, nothing is the like of Him. And He's the most merciful. When you look at the orders of Allah for us to do to worship Him, what is it? It's nothing. It's something that is very simple. And also because of the other sins and so on. But no matter how much a person is good, he still he is in need of the forgiveness from Allah, that Allah accept these simple deeds that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us, gave us the permission to worship him with these deeds. Okay, Shaykh, I, I want to mention some verses from the Quran which talk about uh, Allah's name, Al-Ghafoor. And like you may mention, it, it comes with the name Al-Rahim. There's one particular verse where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, نَبِّ ibadi anni ana al ghafur rahim So here, Allah is telling us to inform, or telling the Prophet to inform the people. What's the importance there? Why is he being ordered to inform the people? Now, uh, this is in, in, in Surah Al-Hijr where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in it actually in the beginning, you know, رُبَمَا يَوَدُّ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا لَوْ كَانُوا مُسْلِمِينَ Okay. Maybe the disbelievers will wish, not maybe, they definitely will wish that they were Muslims. Right? And this is a call for uh, every Muslim 
to be honored and to be in state of happiness and rejoicing that he is a Muslim, right? This is the best gift that a person can be given. But as the verses goes on and the verse and the stories of the story of Adam alayhi salam and so on and so forth, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying to the Prophet inform my slaves that I am the most forgiver, the most merciful, and my punishment is the most painful uh, punishment. Uh, so this is the balance of a Muslim and this is what saves the person from uh, the hellfire. And that human beings, the slaves of Allah, they need to know that, as that's what the ayah says, Nabi ibadi, inform my slaves, so that they would worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala based on what they know about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al ghafur and as we said, al ghafur means that He always forgives. There's no such a thing that, oh, He won't forgive that one. Okay. There's no such a, th a, th a sin, for example, a person would say, well, this sin is not for going to be forgiven. Okay. Shirk is not forgiven if a person dies with it. But if a person is alive, it doesn't matter what sin that is, any sin can be forgiven. Sure. Whether it's a sin as a major or so, or how many sins. You know, if a person commits sins as the number of sand particles on the face of earth, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would forgive his sins if he turns to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is able to do all things. So to be informed of this, what does that imply? implies that your life is about seeking forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sure. and subjecting oneself to the mercy of Allah. Always want the mercy of Allah. And at the same time, we are inf informed that the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a severe punishment. Okay. And that's why we have to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and not to rely on forgiveness. And we basically commit sins and continue to commit sins. But the fact of life is that we have to fall into sins. This is how human beings are. Sure. So that's why they always have to seek forgiveness from Allah. Okay, and in the same surah, um, actually in a different surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he also says, Inna rabbaka wasi'ul maghfirah. Hmm. And uh, in, uh, the word wasi' here is very interesting. Uh, can I ask you to explain that? Inna uh, rabbaka, your Lord. Okay. Right? And the meaning of rububiyya, that he's the Lord, that means he's the creator, the sustainer, and so on. Wasi'ul maghfirah. Al maghfirah is forgiveness. Wasi' means he is, uh, encompasses his forgiveness, everything. He, the wasa is something that's so spacious. When something is so spacious, that means it fits everything. So one of the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he is, al uh, wasa that means he encompasses everything. And encompasses everything, meaning that it doesn't matter how many are the sins of the human beings all together. If all of the sins of the human being from the time of Adam alayhi salam to the day of judgment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can encompass all of that with forgiveness. Okay. If he will, he would forgive all of his creation, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this gives so much hope that it doesn't matter how big the sins are. If a person seeks forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, wa maghfir. It will be sufficient. Okay. It will encompass your sin. It will be spacious enough. Uh, as it you know, would make uh, close to the meaning, spacious enough for the sins to be forgiven, to be wiped away with no harm whatsoever. A person might think that if a person committed a sin in this life, he might be forgiven in the day of judgment, but he has to suffer in this life. No, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is able to forgive, and that means no consequences whatsoever or no bad effects in this life and in the hereafter as a result of the sin. Okay, and uh, also, Shaykh, we find in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he, he says to himself that he's khayrul ghafirin. Hmm. So does that imply that there are others that can forgive as well? Or what is the meaning there? Yeah, uh, khayrul ghafirin, this is what it literally means, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the best of those who would forgive. Sure. Uh, and this is something, yes, since, uh, since human beings, they forgive. And when people forgive, uh, they get loved so much. You know, if someone... Uh, is expecting to be punished or expected to be you know, treated in a certain way and then that person forgives for nothing whatsoever, for nothing in return usually that person would forgive the one that forgave him so much especially when he admit that he committed wrong and so on. Remember you know, when you see people, for example, they kill and then at the last moment before they are executed the family of the deceased you know, they all have to forgive so they would forgive that person Mm. That means they saved his life. Oh. You know, imagine how much that person would have in his heart towards them. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is the best of all of those who forgive because he's the one that created that even in the hearts of the believers. Okay. That's why the forgiveness from Allah, nothing is the like of it. And there's that hadith where uh, Ibn Adam, لَوْ أَتَيْتَنِي بِقُرَابِ الْأَرْضِ خَطَايَ 
O son of Adam, if you come in the day of judgment with the, uh, the amount of sins like the sand particles on the face of earth, and then you, you ask for forgiveness from me, I would forgive you, which means, and I don't care. It does not take away from the power of Allah. It does not take away from the treasures of Allah. So no matter how many or how big the sins are, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives. So after knowing this, it is not something that is a call for people to relax. It's the opposite. Okay. How can a person know this and he continue to be in sins, in the state of sin? And not to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and seek forgiveness when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most forgiver. Okay, Shaykh, on that note, uh, let's take a short break. And then when we come back, we'll continue with our discussion on this name. Dear viewers, the question is still out there for you to pick up your phones and join us with here in the studio. What is the difference between Ar-Rahman and Ar-Rahim? I think it's very easy. We're going to take a short break here. And if you're very quick, you can jump onto YouTube, find the last week's episode and watch the first part. You'll see in there the answer is very clear. So do join us on the phone and give us your questions, your comments after the break and inshallah we'll take your comments on Facebook as well. Let's take a short break. I'll see you all in a few moments. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back dear viewers after taking a short break and joining us live on our program Gems of the Heart where we are looking at the names and the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and today we're looking at the name Ghafir, Al Ghafur and Al Ghaffar. So we've had an introduction into those subjects. Let's continue our discussion and see if we can get into some more detail. Uh, Sheikh, uh, as you had mentioned that these three names revolve around uh, forgiveness but on different levels inshallah uh, I want to also look at the difference between Islam and possibly Christianity or other faiths uh, what is the difference in the concept of forgiveness in these two religions now this is a very good question because uh, many people they have distorted information about the deen of Islam uh, the deen of Allah is, is only one religion and that is the religion of Islam, the religion of all the prophets of Allah that came with one message. But once human beings they start to distort things, then they make it difficult for others. Okay. And that's what really happened to the nations before. They make it difficult for people to repent, make it difficult for people to seek forgiveness from Allah. And plus, maybe this is a good thing, so that the only way for them to be forgiven, which is true, they have to follow the Prophet, Prophet Muhammad wasallam, and they have to embrace the deen of Islam. But as you see, the concept of forgiveness to them, to some of them, you have to go through a certain individual okay. for you to confess your sins. And it has to have that intercession part. You cannot go directly to the Creator of the heavens and the earth. Okay. As if human beings, they have some ownership with matters of forgiveness, which is in itself is so much zulm and injustice in it. What a human being, a sinner himself, can do to another sinner. He cannot even help his own self, let alone helping someone else. Sure. So this is the concept of shirk, basically, associating partners with Allah, going to someone alive, someone that is dead, so a way for the sins to be forgiven. Sure. Or the concept, the major concept, that, for example, for the false belief that Isa alayhi salam was crucified and he was not crucified, as a way to uh, forgive the sins of the people. That means people before he was crucified, they were sinful, and once he was crucified, then people are free from the sin. Uh, first of all, there's no evidence of such a thing whatsoever. But then where does that concept come from? Sure. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is able to, to forgive the people and that's it, you know, without going through all of this. Plus, it has to go through bloodshed and, and killing even as they claim the son of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Where is the forgiveness, as someone yeah, says? In order to forgive a normal person, right. uh, according to their faith, the son of God, the most beloved of God, had to be killed. Right, this, this is amazing. And you imagine how this is so evil if, if a human being would do such a thing. You know, a person wants to forgive someone so he would kill his own son. Why didn't he kill his own self? You know, for, with, for the, from the human standpoint. So it's, it's all corrupted beliefs because it's not from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's not divine. It's human made things. And that's why it's very difficult. And that's why when people commit sins, uh, there are the like of that in Islam as a deviant sect like the Khawarij and the like of this. Sure. Uh, some also in Christianity and so on, many of them, they would believe that there's no forgiveness or there's no salvation for someone that commits a sin. Sure. If a person commits a sin, he's in the hellfire forever okay. because he disobeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay. Right? In Islam, this is another difference. If a person dies on Tawheed and he dies in the state of sin, he did not repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, either Allah would forgive him, he's the most forgiver, or 
he might be punished and then eventually he will be forgiven or enter jannah so but then this is not something that is present there sure to them is either jannah or the hellfire and okay. even that is not really clear and, and also Sheikh, I would like to just highlight here mm-hmm. yeah, we, we've got a phone call I'll take this and then we come back to the question we have Sister Halima from Cairo Assalamu alaikum Alaikum Assalamu wa rahmatullahi wa rahmatullahi How are you Sister? Alhamdulillah 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 Sister would you like to answer the question from last week the difference between Ar-Rahman and Ar-Rahim? Uh, no actually I have a question Sure go ahead Okay, um, uh, before the Sheikh mentioned, um, like when we uh, make something, um, like uh, like always Allah forgives, you know? Sure. Even uh, anything what you com- commit in the past or everything. But, for example, for me, when I pray or something, then I sometimes, uh, like, make, um, I remember something what I make in the past. Then I don't know how, I don't know maybe if Allah forgive me or not, how I can, you know. Okay, thank you very much, Sister Halima. I think your question is clear. Thank you very much uh, for your phone call. Uh, sister is referring to the fact that she's made a mistake and she's made tawbah for it, if I understood her correctly, and that when she prays, she still remembers her mistake. So how does she know that her tawbah has been forgiven or not? No. Uh, this is uh, a very... By itse- the question and the concern by itself is a sign by the will of Allah that the sin is forgiven. Why? Because we have to have good expectations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanahu. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised forgiveness. And when, uh, the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the truth. No one is more truthful in his promises than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَإِنِّي لَغَفَّارٌ لِمَنْ تَابَ وَآمَنَ وَعَمِلَ صَالِحًا ثُمَّ اهْتَدَ that I'm ghaffar, definitely, and lam al-qasam, and inni, many different things are mentioned to make it very clear, and this is something that has to happen, but with conditions, of course. Okay. That I'm the most forgiver for those who uh, tab, repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so fulfilling the conditions of repentance, leaving the sin, regretting the sin, having the strong intention that you won't commit it again, and to have the proper belief, which shows the importance of matters of belief, and to make good deeds, okay. to replace the bad deeds with good deeds, and to be steadfast on good deeds till the last moment of one's life, these are the ones that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised them forgiveness. Okay. So uh, having the good expectations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if your life changed after the sin, it's all signs. We only know as signs if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive the sin or not, sure. because He's the most forgiver. So, uh, life changed. Uh, staying away from the sin uh, good deeds are more now being steadfast on the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to keep on having these thoughts is a healthy way to keep us steadfast but okay. not to the extent in which it makes a person have bad expectations of Allah sure. this is not permissible but to think of it to remember the favor of Allah on them on, on oneself to be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he guided us to repent and to seek forgiveness. And once a person is guided to repent and to seek forgiveness, that means he is, by the will of Allah, is going to be forgiven. Because the one that guided him sure. and called him to repent and to seek forgiveness, he's the one that promised the forgiveness. Mm-hmm. As the meaning of Umar radiallahu anhu, when he said, I don't really uh, care much about the acceptance of the dua. I care more about making dua. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised that the dua will be accepted. So if you find yourself being guided to ask for forgiveness, and the Prophet ﷺ used to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness every day a hundred times, and to repent to Allah always, and to do good deeds, and to be steadfast on the deen of Allah, then a person should have the glad tidings and rejoice, and continue to be steadfast till the last moment of one's life. Sure, and uh, Shaykh also, if a person remembers the uh, sin that, he or she has done and then follows that up with some good by saying astaghfirullah and so on and so forth that's a good thing because you actually end up doing something good right definitely and that's where it, it's a healthy way to do so but once it makes a person shaitan whispers and he uses these types of thoughts and he would say you're no good okay your sins would never be forgiven this is an evil thing of course all right Sheikh, we've got another phone call and we have with us brother muhammad calling us from egypt assalamu alaikum how are you doing muhammad Okay, very, uh, very well. Thank you, sir. First of all, I would like to thank uh, Sheikh Ibrahim for his good contributions and his unlimited knowledge. 
Thank you, uh, Sheikh Ibrahim. And I'm welcome. Okay. Uh, uh, in relation to the question that was proposed the new program, sir. Sure, uh, go ahead. I, I, I'm going to uh, put an answer and I ask Allah uh, may lead me to the right path. I mean, go ahead. Okay, you would like to distinguish or uh, differentiate between the word Ar-Rahim and the word Ar-Rahman. Yes, okay? please. Ar-Rahman uh, maybe uh, can be translated in English as the merciful or the, the compassionate. Okay. And uh, Ar-Rahim may be translated to or uh, may be said in English as the most merciful or the most compassionate. Okay. There is an, over, uh, or an exaggeration and uh, over drama dramatization and the word mercy. He is the most merciful over all the people and over, over all the creatures. Okay? Sure. Uh, uh, but uh, according to the question that I would like to ask Sheikh Ibrahim, sir, is uh, the meaning of the verse that was repeated in Surah al uh, God says, or Allah's glory be to him, says, بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الله لا يغفر أن يشرك به ويغفر ما دون ذلك لمن يشاء right. According to this ayah or this verse uh, uh, our uh, uh, mother of believers uh, Aisha may Allah be pleased with her mm. this is a hadith or a short saying to the prophet uh, in which the prophet peace and prayers be upon him says uh, in just uh, if three kinds or three diwan, a diwan that Allah may forgive to the sinful, and a diwan Allah never forgives to the sinful, and a diwan which is left to uh, the satisfaction of the servants or the people whom I, I do send to, or I make mistakes uh, to them. Okay? Okay, Brother Muhammad, thank you very much. Uh, first and foremost, for your praise for the Sheikh, mashallah, he, he is doing a great job here with us at Huda TV. And secondly, also for answering the question, thank you very much for your response on the Rahman and Rahim. And then thirdly, your question, let's pose that to the Sheikh and see what the response is. Sheikh, tafadda. Uh, mashallah, the, the verse is clear that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not forgive uh, that people would associate partners with him and everything else other than that is forgiven by the will of Allah it refers to if a person dies meets Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with this unforgivable sin sure. if he dies in the state of shirk in the state of associating partners with Allah but it doesn't mean that if a person during his life he repents to Allah from shirk of course that sin is forgiven if a person during his life he repents to Allah and that's where people were disbelievers and they become believers but if a person dies in that state then this is the sin that is not forgiven whatsoever. A person has to be in now fire forever. After the message has been uh, came or came to the person perfectly, then if he dies in the state of shirk, this is not a forgivable sin. Okay. Other than that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives if a person dies in the state of tawheed. As far as the hadith that was mentioned, uh, actually the Sama Dama they mentioned that the hadith is weak, but the meaning is correct. Where there is the deeds are divided into three categories. Okay. One diwan or one set of deeds where uh, you know the, 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 the sin are not forgiven whatsoever which is shirk and that's why even some of the ulama they said the minor shirk comes into this category so even as a Muslim a person has to be warned severely from even the minor shirk okay. to avoid it because it might fall into that category which is not forgiven and the person has to be punished even though he died in the tawheed but he has to be punished if it's a minor shirk and then eventually he will enter Jannah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the other uh, part which is deals with the sins uh, uh, less than shirk Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive that okay. and the third one the hukuk of al-ibad of al the rights of the human beings it has two things to it one is the obedience of Allah that people disobey them and the human beings they have to forgive one another that's why even the believers after they cross the salat they have to get even before they enter Jannah Okay, Sheikh, we've got another phone call. Let's take this and we'll come back to our discussion. We have with us Brother Ali Uganda. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa How are you doing, Brother? Alhamdulillah, how are you guys doing? Uh, Alhamdulillah, very well. Good to hear from you. Go ahead, give us your question or your comment as you please. Um, first, about the answer to your question. Sure. 
Yeah, Ar Rahman deals with the mercy of Allah to all creation. Okay. And then Ar Rahim is Allah's mercy to the believer. MashaAllah. I think you got. Yeah, that's the correct answer. Okay, that's 10 out of 10. Well done, Ali. MashaAllah. Okay. And then uh, uh, my question is Could the Sheikh comment about those who oppress people by day and repent by night? Okay. All right, good question. Hello, have you heard me? Yeah, we heard you. Yes, talking about the oppression of those who commit oppression in the daytime and they seek forgiveness in the nighttime. Do you have any other comment or other question, Brother yeah. Ali? No, thank you so much. You guys are doing a great job. Uh, pray for the people in Aleppo. Thank you. Okay, of course, we will remember everybody, inshallah. We'd like to thank you very much uh, for your phone call and for your correct answer as well. Well done, mashallah. You are the winner of the week. And of course, we will not forget the people of Aleppo in our prayers at any time. Uh, Sheikh, I think the brother is uh, is either from Syria or is concerned about the affairs of Syria and he's talking about the situation of Muslims in Aleppo. And he's asking about the ruling of the people who oppress in the daytime and in the nighttime they seek Allah's forgiveness. Uh, first of all, I'm not sure if all of them would seek Allah's forgiveness during the night. Okay. Many of the bad effects of oppression that the oppressor would be so much arrogant that he does not even feel that he is in need to seek forgiveness because he doesn't feel that he's doing anything wrong. SubhanAllah. And that's part of the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on someone that becomes in that state of oppression. But if, uh, to answer the question, if a person commit the act of oppression and then at night he asks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness, oppressing people, uh, doing this dhulm or injustice has two folds to it. Part of it is that he's disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the rights between him and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a person can, if he sincerely repents to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most forgiver. And nobody can really uh, decide or suggest on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whether to forgive or not. He forgive all sins, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay. The worst individual on the face of earth, if he's still alive, he can still, he have a chance to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to enter the Jannah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why the believers, they should warn themselves from already deciding that certain individuals, there's no way that they would receive salvation and so on. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most merciful. But when it comes to the rights of the human beings, those who are being oppressed, they have to forgive. Okay. And, and this is another thing. And that's why the rights of the human being is the most difficult thing for a person to relieve himself from. And a vulm vulumati yom al as the Prophet ﷺ said, oppression or wrongdoing or injustice is darknesses in the day of judgment. And the first thing that people will deal with one another in the day of judgment is a dima, is blood. Okay. And the killed one will come in the day of judgment with his killer. And he would drag him as the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. And he would bring him in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he would say, Oh Allah, ask this person, why did he kill me? Okay. And then, you know, the sin that is comes after shirk is the sin of killing innocent people. And that's why it's not about those who are killed, those who are killed unjustly and they die in the state of Al Islam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most merciful for them. But the problem for those who oppress them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide all Muslims to what is right I mean so our message to those who are butchering people across the world is first and foremost to turn back to Allah to seek his forgiveness and you will still have hope on the day of judgment definitely nobody can control that nobody can make the, the mercy of Allah tight when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it spacious okay uh, Sheikh uh, we are drawing towards the end of the program but I would like to also look at in ways in which we can achieve Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's uh, mercy or his forgiveness uh, as we're talking um, the one interesting thing that the Prophet sallam used to make is the far over a hundred times in the day and he was promised paradise what's the significance of that and how can we attain his forgiveness uh, the Prophet sallam, he would ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness every day hundred times now they say the Prophet sallam, was in the state of legislating for his ummah so this is uh, for the Prophet sallam, teaching the ummah how to live one's life but also as a reality the Prophet sallam, even though his sins are forgiven and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protected him from committing sins but just the fact that a person is a slave of Allah, that's by necessity, he has to seek forgiveness. Okay. As we said, it does not, it, there's no way that a person can perceive a, 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 a person that is a slave of Allah and a messenger of Allah, and he's not seeking forgiveness from Allah. It doesn't work this way. Human beings, they, are, they have human nature in them which makes them deficient and weak. So they have to... to uh, to do something about this weakness and that is by seeking forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the highest level of ubudiyah that a person can reach 
was done by the Prophet ﷺ. And that can never be attained unless a person is constantly seeking Allah for forgiveness. And that's why the Prophet ﷺ was the best ever among human beings to seek forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it's not necessarily because of a specific sin or so. Tawbah becomes mandatory in this case. No, the istighfar is, a, is an act of worship that constantly should be always with the believers, even if they think that they did not commit anything of major sins and so on. But the fact that the ibadah itself, the human nature being part of our life, that by itself is needing, uh, we need to seek forgiveness because of that. Okay, excellent. So one of the ways is by saying istighfar or making istighfar uh, as much as we can. Definitely. And okay. one of the things that it's, it's good to remember, uh, when you, people always say how to say Astaghfirullah al-Azim, Astaghfirullah al-Azim wa atubu ilayh. But there's a hadith in Sunan Abi Dawood where the Prophet Sallallahu said, whoever says something three times, Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala would forgive his sins even if he flee from the battlefield, which is a major sin. Sure. Which is Astaghfirullah al-Ladhi, la ilaha illa huwa al-hayu al-qayyum wa atubu ilayh. Three okay. times. Astaghfirullah al-Ladhi, la ilaha illa huwa al-hayu al-qayyum wa atubu ilayh. Whoever says it three times, his sins will be forgiven even if he fleed from the battlefield, which is, you know, a major sin. Okay, excellent. Uh, Shaykh, on that note, uh, let's take some of the responses we've had on Facebook and our question from last week. And also, viewers, you still have the opportunity to call us. We have like two or three minutes to go. So you have one opportunity to call us and speak to us here in the studio, to myself and to the Sheikh. So pick up your phones and join us in these last few moments. Um, Sheikh, we have a response uh, from Sister Mary Oli. Mashallah, very active sister with us on Gems of the Heart. Oh. And she says, Assalamu alaikum ar-Rahman. Uh, is used for Allah's mercy to everyone, believers or disbelievers, animals, for all creation. And Ar-Rahim is specific only to the believers. MashaAllah. Perfect. Man. Perfect? Yes. Excellent. The Sheikh said perfect. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So the next uh, response were from Sister Amina Muhammad Abdullahi. She says, Assalamu alaikum. The term Ar-Rahman means the most beneficent to all mankind, and Ar-Rahim means the most merciful to the believers. Same thing, mashallah. Okay, well done, Sister Amina. Brother Latif, he says, Assalamu alaikum. Ar Rahman means the entirely merciful whose mercy encompasses everything, while Ar Rahim means specifically the merciful whose mercy would be specific to the believers on the day of judgment. MashaAllah. Okay, Brother Very Latif, good. got yeah, it right so as well. Excellent. So, much of people are nice picking up and learning from nice our program, sir. Nice and the last one is Sister Zaza Um Muhammad, and she says, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ar Rahman refers to Allah's mercy and compassion to all of His creatures, and Ar Rahim is Allah's mercy only to the believer on the day of judgment. Inshallah. Okay, Beautiful. so all four people have got the answers correct. MashaAllah. That's the concept of forgiveness, even the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, لَوْ لَمْ تُذْنِبُوا لَذَهَبَ اللَّهُ بِكُمْ وَلَجَاءَ بِقَوْمٍ يُذْنِبُونَ فَيَغْفِرْ لَهُمْ If you don't commit sins, Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala would replace you by other people that would commit sins and Allah would forgive them. Okay. So this is the attribute of Allah. It doesn't make, mean that we should commit sins. Sure. It means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most forgiver. Okay. People should never leave this act of worship. It's something that is with Iman. So every Muslim, everybody is in need of forgiveness that we should not wait for something major sin to happen to ask for forgiveness. It becomes part of our ibadah on a daily basis that we mean it, that there's no sin is hanging on there for us to not to repent but repenting from all sins and constantly asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness okay and Sheikh we are coming to the end of the program but I, I want to ask you one quick question and that is we said one of the ways to attain Allah's forgiveness is by making istighfar but should we also seek people's forgiveness as well for the mistakes or the wrongs that we have done in order for Allah to be more merciful to us definitely as we said this is one of the difficult ones to relieve oneself from the consequences of the sins when it has to deal with others so we need to seek forgiveness or to give back what we took from others or whatever you know the rulings are to relieve ourselves from being dragged in the day of judgment people taking from our good deeds or putting our their bad deeds on us it's a very important thing to be focused on and to ask them for forgiveness and to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness and to keep our tongue busy with saying astaghfirullah as al-hasan rahimahullah said in the meaning of which make istighfar everywhere in the market, in your, on your bed, in your home, in the streets, everywhere. Because you never know when the acceptance will come from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm. So once the acceptance comes, that means a person is the happiest person on the face of earth. Okay, Shaykh, I'm now being told to speed up uh, the program. Nice. So uh, we would like to conclude by mentioning the question for the next week. What is the question, Shaykh? 
As usual. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I've got permission from the Sheikh to put forward the question, and it is going to be, uh, what is the difference between the name Al-Ghafoor and Al-Ghaffar? Okay, so a bit of a linguistic difference here. So you're going to have to study the names, the two names, and what is the difference between the Sheikh mentioned it right at the beginning of the program. So you can go back and watch it, inshallah ta'ala. We will put the question on Facebook. You can answer it, and we'll also open the lines on our coming uh, program. So, Sheikh, on, on this point, I'd like to thank you for coming mm -hmm. to the program, inshallah. Very interesting. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, really, the names and attributes of Allah is the best thing to study. It really mm -hmm. opens the heart and opens the mind uh, to mm -hmm. and brings you closer to Allah. MashaAllah. The best subject to talk about now. Okay. Okay, and Sheikh, I'll conclude by saying Assalamu alaikum. Dear viewers, we've come to the end of this week's program on Gems of the Heart. And mashallah, we've taken another name, three names, but with very similar meanings. And that is the concept of forgiveness. We need to seek Allah's forgiveness. We need to keep our tongues busy with astaghfirullah and various other ad'iyah like the Shaykh has made mention. And very important as well is the fact that we are not just seeking Allah's forgiveness, but we need to seek forgiveness from people as well who we have wronged. Connect your ties with your kins, with your family and your friends. If you have done wrong to somebody, say sorry and make amends. And finally, we conclude by saying thank you very much to Brother Ali, who was successful today with answering his question. 10 out of 10, the Sheikh said the word perfect. And we will not forget the people of Aleppo, the people of Syria. Everybody make dua for them. They are going through a very difficult time uh, during these days. On that note, we'd like to conclude. Thank you all for tuning in. We'll see you next week on our program. Until then, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.